So we are at the point where we are most likely going to go the entirety of 2024 without any Legend ZA news, which is pretty dang crazy. However, with the year ending and Pokemon Day right around the corner in February, it also means we are getting legitimately close to the drought of news ending and finally getting some information on this game. So I figured that in the last little bit of time before all of this news starts to drop, that I would drop my 10 major predictions about Pokemon Legends ZA. These are meant to be bold, hence the word major, and I don't necessarily expect all these to come true either, but there is an air of feasibility around each one of them that makes the possibility of each of them pretty exciting. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. The first prediction that I would like to discuss is that we will find out who the one is that the Lumios City Ghost Girl is referring to, or at least we'll learn more about her in general. Obviously, the Ghost Girl was one of the craziest and most mysterious things about Pokemon X and Y, to the point where the developers themselves were even asked about it, so they know how much of a stir that it caused, and given that we are now returning to the games, or rather the setting where the Ghost Girl appeared, it only makes sense to have the concept revived. The fact that we are revisiting Kalos in general on its own gives us a pretty good chance, in my opinion, to get another appearance from the Ghost Girl, especially due to the Ghost Girl's popularity and level of intrigue. But given Legend ZA's premise in particular, which is that it's set entirely within Lumios City, where the Ghost Girl was found, and the fact that Legends games are generally more lore heavy, at least based on what we saw in Legends Arceus, I think that it is very possible that the Ghost Girl could make an appearance in this game and that we could potentially get another clue about who the one is that she's been searching for all this time. Moving along though, my next major prediction is that we are going to get to see more of AZ's family in this game. AZ was obviously a central character in X and Y, whose entire character was essentially based on his backstory. As a part of this backstory, we've gotten to learn a decent amount about his family as well, including that he has a brother, who is the ancestor of Lysander, and of his mother, who apparently was the one who gave him the Eternal Flower Floette. I think there is a very solid shot that we will get to see at least one of these characters, either in a flashback or possibly even in person, depending on when Legend ZA takes place and what ends up happening in the game itself. I mean, as a central character in X and Y, there is no doubt that AZ is going to play a big role in this game as well, and given that his name is more or less in the title of the game itself, it pretty much feels like a foregone conclusion that AZ as a character is going to be explored a ton. And if this game is anything like Legends Arceus and how it featured ancestors and relatives of various characters, finally getting to see AZ's family after all of these years seems like it could be a legit possibility. This next prediction isn't actually a prediction so much as it is what helps to make the predictions possible, and that's today's sponsor, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. We are officially in the thick of the holiday season, and that means these wonderful subscription boxes are ready to bring you holiday-themed goodies that come directly from Japan right to your door. Tokyo Treat is going with the Very Merry Snackmas theme this holiday season and includes stuff like these amazing chocolate crepe flavored Kit Kat. Sakura Co, meanwhile, is a monthly Japanese artisan snack box, and its theme this month is Holidays in Hokkaido, which is where the Sinnoh region is based in Pokemon, so this box is giving off some major Sinnoh vibes. Also, while it is not in Hokkaido, this box does come with this Mount Fuji-shaped Senbei, which is sort of like a cookie, but also more of a cracker too, but either way, it is super fun and awesome. You even get an authentic piece of Japanese tableware from this box as well, which is a super nice touch. 
These boxes would honestly make great gifts or stocking stuffers for the holidays, so to pick one up, hit the links in the description, and when you use code HOOPS at checkout, you can also get $5 off of your first box. So be sure to give that a look, and happy holidays to everyone, and thanks so much to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. for sponsoring. My third prediction is a biggie, because I am now going to go out on a limb and say that time travel will somehow be involved in the gameplay of Legend ZA, and not just its story. While we don't know what is ultimately going to happen, there is a strong possibility that Legend ZA will follow in the footsteps of Legends Arceus and be some kind of a period piece, especially given that that seems to be the theme of the Legends games as a whole, since they're obviously called Legends in the first place. Additionally, the reveal trailer of the game also gave off the sense that both the past and the future could play a factor, as it went from primitive, hand-drawn blueprints to futuristic 3D ones. And while that could symbolize any number of things, it does seem to add to the idea of time playing a factor even more. There's also the fact that X and Y's plot is based heavily on the past as well, with the whole 3,000 years ago storyline and all of its events being a driving force for what happens in the present day of the games. And then when you also factor in that time travel was actually a part of Legends Arceus as well, with characters like Ingo and the player character, I could certainly see a scenario where the idea of time travel is a little more hands-on in this game and is involved in the actual gameplay rather than just the story. For my next prediction, I believe that the Draconids could also play a factor in this game. First and foremost, it's very likely at this point that we are going to see Rayquaza in some fashion in this game. It is heavily tied in with Mega Evolution lore, there is apparently some kind of organization in the game that is tied to this logo, which resembles a Quasar, which ties to Rayquaza even more since that's where its name comes from, and then, for good measure, we are even seeing Rayquaza play a major role in the anime right now, alongside a Zygarde in Pokemon Horizons. So suffice it to say that Rayquaza is probably going to be involved in Legend ZA. Therefore, the Draconids also being involved in this game becomes all the more of a possibility if Rayquaza is involved in it too, especially since a lot of this is predicated on the presence of Mega Evolution, and the Draconids have a lot to do with Mega Rayquaza in particular. Additionally, if this Quasar group is actually a quote-unquote Rayquaza group, then we now also have a likely Rayquaza group in this game as well, which is exactly what the Draconids themselves already are, so they might even be connected to this group somehow as well, because what are the odds that we get another Rayquaza dedicated group that just has no connections to the Draconids whatsoever? So, this one actually does seem pretty possible in my opinion, despite also feeling a little out of left field. As a byproduct of this idea though, another prediction that I would like to make is that Zinnia and or Aster will somehow be involved or make an appearance in this game. I mean, if the Draconids are going to, then the possibility of one of these two appearing increases dramatically, but also, they're just prime candidates in terms of characters in general that Game Freak could utilize in a game like this. First, in Zinnia's case, she obviously is a significant part of the Mega Evolution arc, even if it was on the Oraz side of things that she appeared in. She also is obviously connected to Rayquaza herself, who we've already discussed just barely as a possibility, and she was beyond a fan favorite. People absolutely love Zinnia. Plus, as a lore keeper, there probably isn't a character who would fit better in a Legends game than her, so I could definitely see it. 
In the case of Aster, however, she is obviously a mysterious character who essentially amounts to a relative of Zinnia's. She's not a literal relative, but she is tied very closely to Zinnia. And as I mentioned before, these kinds of ancestral characters and relatives is something that Legends games like to explore. Granted, we only have Legends Arceus as a precedent for that, but overall, Aster does seem like the kind of mysterious, intriguing sort of character that would fit the bill perfectly as a character that could be involved somehow in a game like Legend ZA. And speaking of relatives, I have mentioned this next idea before, but I think it is such a solid idea that I wanted to bring it back up one more time. And that is the idea that either Watson or a relative of Watson is going to be present in this game and is more specifically going to be involved in the redevelopment project that is going on in Lumio City. This is because Watson, as a Hoenn character, is a part of the Mega Evolution arc that includes both X and Y and Oraz, so his character would be fitting for a game like this. Second is that redeveloping a city is literally something that Watson specializes in. He did this exact same thing in Oraz with Mauville City, and I don't necessarily think it's a coincidence that of the two regions that played a major role in the Mega Evolution story, Hoenn had one of its cities redeveloped, and now Kalos is getting that exact same treatment as well. So I feel like if any character is going to be heading the redevelopment of Lumio City, or is going to be involved with it at all, Watson or some kind of Watson relative is the prime candidate for this position and is the most likely character to be doing that in my opinion. To the point where I would be genuinely surprised if this just wasn't the case at all. So, of all of my predictions in this video, this is one of the ones that I personally feel the most confident in. On the flip side of this though, let's go ahead and discuss something that's a little bit more of a toss up. I'm going to go ahead and put it out there that I think there is a possibility that we will get a Z Mega Evolution of some kind, just like we had X and Y Megas in Pokemon X and Y. Now, there are only two Pokemon that actually have those X and Y Mega Evolutions, and that's because there's only two Pokemon that have more than one Mega Evolution in general, and that is Charizard and Mewtwo. So, theoretically, if we were to get a Z Mega, one or both of these Pokemon would have to be the ones to receive it. This makes the possibility of this happening all the more murky, in my opinion, ironically enough, because I don't exactly know if Game Freak would cater to a single Pokemon this much, even though these Pokemon are as popular as they are, to the point where they would give them a third Mega Evolution. Because people were already freaking out and complaining enough when these Pokemon got two, so three could cause a bit of an uproar. However, on the other hand, so many people have talked about the idea of a Mega Charizard Z happening, and it's been a really cool concept for years, and with Legend ZA also being essentially the Pokemon Z that never was, and we're finally getting this game after all of these years, I could also see a special Z Mega Evolution happening in some way, shape, or form as a sort of way to help things come full circle with regards to the Kalos region. It just feels like the kind of thing that would be fitting. It might not even be with Charizard or Mewtwo. It could also be the sort of thing where it's like a special new form of Mega Evolution that gets introduced in this game and some Pokemon get it because they're special for some reason and they end up going that kind of route with it. So overall, even though this one is a little bit of a toss up, I could still see it happening. And on a similar note, I am going to go ahead and make the claim that the Bond phenomenon will somehow be present in Legends ZA. 
Given that we know at this point that Pokemon Z was definitely a thing, and then also by putting two and two together that the Pokemon X, Y, and Z arc of the anime was clearly supposed to tie into this game, the Bond phenomenon and Ash Greninja along with it was definitely going to be present in Pokemon Z to some kind of degree before it was moved over to Sun and Moon. Judging by the way it was used and the clear parallels that it does have with Mega Evolution as far as requiring a strong bond with your Pokemon, I think this was something that they definitely wanted to explore a little bit more than they ended up doing as a kind of upgraded Mega Evolution, similar to what I was mentioning previously with the whole Z Mega concept. With that said, I will say with almost no doubt whatsoever that at the very least, Ash Greninja is going to be present in Legend ZA, even if it just ends up being a gift Pokemon or something to that effect. But past that, I also do believe that the Bond phenomenon could be explored a little bit more as well. In fact, it actually would be pretty fitting to give two more Bond forms to the other two Kalos starters that would be based around the two player characters of this game, so that in the end, each Kalos starter has a Bond Phenomenon form. Hypothetically speaking, I could see something like that happening, but I could also see this being the sort of thing that just ends up getting some lines of dialogue and a few more details mentioned about it if you end up talking to someone while you also have that gift Ash Greninja in your party, or something to that kind of effect. Whatever the case may be though, I can definitely see it having some kind of role to play in Legend ZA, so this one is definitely going to be worth keeping an eye on. And another thing that could potentially add to that is that playing as your Pokemon via the Synchro Machine could be a significant part of this game. We saw the Synchro Machine introduced in the Scarlet and Violet DLC, and it was not only very popular, but it also seemed like the kind of feature that was potentially being tested in the DLC for future titles. Well, lo and behold, if you look at the map of Lumio City in Legend ZA, you can see what appears to be a facility with the logo of the Synchro Machine on it which seems to all but confirm that this feature is somehow going to be present in the game. Additionally, X and Y's themes of the bonds with your Pokemon makes a feature like this in particular all the more likely, and I could personally see it being utilized in a number of different ways. It could tie into the bond phenomenon like I said, but I could also see it being used to allow you to play as your Pokemon in a more high stakes kind of scenario compared to what we saw with the Scarlet and Violet DLC, such as actually being used to help you complete a side quest, or to be able to access an area that you can't get to as a person. Overall, I think it is very possible that we could be getting some more in-depth gameplay in this game with you playing as your Pokemon, which is going to be very interesting to potentially see. And now we're going to talk about something that many people have been wondering about for a long time, but I'm going to go ahead and just declare it as a prediction that Paradox Pokemon will play a factor in this game and that the Eternal Flower Floette will be revealed to be a Paradox Pokemon itself. People have been discussing this for a long time, pretty much as long as Scarlet and Violet has been released, in fact, and well before we even knew that Pokemon Legends ZA was even a thing. We all thought back then that black and white remakes were going to be coming out following Scarlet and Violet, so the fact that all of this speculation wasn't even fueled by the possibility of a new Kalos game or remake, and then it was followed up with the announcement of a new Kalos game that no one saw coming, makes it feel like the stars might actually be aligning on this idea. 
Additionally, if we look at the speculation itself, it is also extremely noteworthy and substantial, especially concerning Floet's status as a possible Paradox Pokémon. Its appearance is consistent with that of a Paradox Pokémon, it has almost identical stats to a Paradox Pokémon, and it practically already has its own Paradox Pokémon name, since it's known as the Eternal Flower Floet, which could genuinely be its name if it was in fact a Paradox Pokémon. There's also the fact that we are still in Gen 9 with regards to Pokemon Legends ZA, so the Gen 9 storyline could feasibly roll over into this game somewhat, and that could be assisted by the fact that Kalos and Paldea as Pokemon regions are likely right next to each other geographically speaking, just like their real-world counterparts of France and Spain. So, to reiterate what I said before, it just kinda feels like a lot of the stars are aligning with this one, in just the way that they would need to for this to actually be a legitimate thing. So, like some of these others, this one is going to be very interesting to look out for once Pokemon Legends ZA finally comes out. Now it is your turn though to let me know what you guys think, so be sure to let me know all of your thoughts as well as your own predictions down in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. I will see you all soon with the next video as well, and until then, as always, thanks so much for watching this one, I really appreciate it, and I will smell you guys later.